Alright, sige. So our last lecture for today, this is lesson 6. This is about search engine optimization and analytics. Who hasn't heard of search engine optimization? Everyone has heard about this? What do you understand about search engine optimization? Yeah, go. Okay, so everyone's saying Google. Why? What about Google? What will you do on Google? Oh, yes, it's the top search engine that we have. It's the most famous. And what else? What do people do on Google? They search. So like I said, the story about the awareness, consideration, and decision, the buyer journey, you start with being aware about your problem. And once people become aware of their problem, most probably they will go to Google and search about it. Right? So when people search about it, okay, so that becomes the search term on the search engine. And once people try to search, it's the advertisers, it's the publisher's goal or role to make sure that if they want to promote themselves or to make sure that people can find them online, that their website ranks as part or as part of the top results of the search. Right? So that is the goal of search engine optimization. It's maximizing your website potential with SEO. But what is search engine optimization? So as you build websites, it is important for us to appear on the search results. All the efforts that we're doing right now, if we're not showing up on the search results, it is being wasted. So unless you put your website on a business card, unless you announce it on Facebook, then no one will be able to find your website on the search engines unless you optimize it. Most importantly, or rather, more importantly, you have to rank higher than your competition. Imagine me searching for uh, La Libertad products. And there are a lot of competitors that you have that are ranking, but your product is not there, right? So you have to rank higher, at least show up on the competition or the search results, I mean. So this process of optimization is called search engine optimization or what we call SEO. It is a combination of things that you do on your site so that search engines can find you. All right, this is an example. Like if you search for the top social media posts, you want to show up as the top results, especially if you are a website that is promoting the use of uh, promoting creation of social media or you are a tool wherein you can write or produce social media posts, then you want to show up. So here, the results include co-schedule, orbit media, blog. So it is a combination. This one is a tool. This one is a company. And then this one is also a tool. So if you are offering services for social media posts or optimization, <laughs> then you would want to show up on the results for social media posts. What are the types of optimization? Now, there's such a thing as on-page optimization. And the key areas of this is focusing on the quality of content. That is why we want to be able to green light the Yoast SEO tool because it signals to us, it tells us that you have quality content. The Yoast SEO tool will give you an idea on what things to edit on your article or if it is readable enough so that people can understand what you are trying to say or writing on your article. Aside from quality of content, you have your architecture. You have to have your proper headings, proper HTML, proper tagging, linking back, linking internally. So this combination of architecture and quality of content contributes to your on-page SEO. Right. So when you search online and then you find the results... Sure. <laughs> Can I record? Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, sige. So again, when you search um, online, usually you, you will see websites that have complete information, right? 
And luckily, these websites are have the capacity to optimize how they're seen in the results by doing proper SEO. That is why when you search for them, this brand like Design Aeon, you can see that they have their page title here and that they have their meta description, right? So all of these are matching their description, their URL, their page title. You don't do such, such thing as creating a different URL, a domain name, but your page title or your website title has a different name. It wouldn't match. That, that's not SEO optimized. And then you have here your meta description. It has to mention your site name or your focus keyword, depending on where you are. And then more results, if you would click that, you would see na they have a whole host of other content that's being logged on your um, on the search engine or results. Okay. So now what's important and we already know it, we've been mentioning it since our first lesson, that mobile is very much important right now. If your website is not mobile optimized, then most probably people will get out of your website and search for other results. So make sure that when you are creating your website right now, your site can be viewed on mobile and it's optimized for mobile. Another thing is that Google, as we mentioned, already imposed that websites that don't have SSL or security certificates, it will now show as not secured. So if you would look at some of your, or actually most of your website site now, it would say not secured. So how do you fix that? The way to fix that is in, to install a security certificate or the SSL. So I have a video on YouTube. Those who have um, the websites already, no? I have a YouTube video that tells you how to get a free SSL via Cloudflare. So I suggest you look at that this weekend so that you can explore and install it for your websites. So you would know that you have successfully installed your certificate when it doesn't show the not secured anymore. It shows the lock icon. So what are the types of optimization? So Kanina, we have mentioned um, on-page SEO as an example. There's also such thing as off-page SEO or off-the-page SEO. So the influencing factors or the things that would affect the score of your off-page SEO are its usefulness. Are people staying long on your site? So if your website, first time pa lang nag-visit, lots of pop-ups, lots of forms, no? then most probably the person would also bounce from the site. Bounce meaning get out of the site. So if your bounce rate is very high on the site, most probably you have not optimized your site. Now, um, trackers love this because they know na if your site does not retain users that long, it must not be a good site. So it's an influ influencing factor. And also, do they come back to your site? Have they visited only once or multiple times? Are they new visitors or are they returning? Um, users, no? Do you have original content or are these only copy-pasted from other sites? No? So do you know um, tools that would track if a content has been used or not? I'm sure there are tools na may use nimo um, to check if your content has been plagiarized. No? I, I forgot the name of the tool but there's a tool for that. It's um, used by SEO. So links. Do other sites link back to you or mention your brand? So meaning to say you have a high influence, if your brand has a huge influence, then it has been mentioned by other media sites or other bloggers. That is why there is a huge, um, there is a huge influence of these bloggers who write blog posts. Because once they mention your brand and then they link back to your site, it gives authority to your site. It passes on that authority, especially when that site is quite well known or trusted. No? That is why some brands actually invest in digital PR, meaning to say they do events. Have you seen that? They do events offline. They invite bloggers to come. And after the event, you would see that some people are posting about the event. They're also writing blog posts. 
and they're linking back to their site. And that action itself, that whole event, actually contributes to your optimization, your SEO. So did your brand or link mention come from a site with authority? So that's what I just uh, explained right now. So was it mentioned because it has relevant or high value context? No? Are people sharing your content because it's useful? So link box to your site are quite important. That is why ako po, kanang, there are some SEO people who email me and then they would say, I want to partner with you. Um, can we contribute this article that we have? You can put it on your website. So ang goal din nila ato is to use my site to link back to them so that my the authority of my site would be passed on to them. So that's kind of a tactic that SEO use. So maybe some of your clients in the future, they might tell you to, okay, can you write an article and make sure you have this keyword, this phrase. I want the phrase, uh, what do you call that, like baby stroller, best baby stroller. They want you to write an article about it. And then that article, it has to link back to my product in my site. And then this article, he would say, okay, can you submit it to that site? Because that site has um, reviews about baby products. So now, ikaw, what you're going to do is to contact that site owner and then tell them, I have a very nice article. Do you want to publish this on your site? So it will be the prerogative of the site owner to see if your content is actually valuable. They can publish it. And now you have link juice pointing back to your site. So that's how SEO works. That's why you're doing articles, you're linking back, you're putting keywords. All of these actions that you're doing contribute to search engine optimization. So that you will have an idea bang anong ipa-write ng kong article ni client? Anong kailangan man na i-link? Anong kailangan man na itong phrase? So all of that action, all of those are factors for SEO. And then next is verified. If your site is a business, then get properly registered and verified at Google. So you have Google business. If you'd search this, um, that's one task that you need to do for your MSMEs. Especially when it, they have a storefront. You know what the storefront is? Nas like in the hundred, as a location. They have to be registered on Google business. So that their address will show up on the map. So you wonder how people or how businesses are actually showing up on Google Maps or on um, results for businesses, that's through Google Business. So search that, that's part of your assignment. Search for Google Business and register your client on Google Business. Coordinate with them, what's the official name, what's your official address, and of course you add your website, the one that you um, newly made, and then all add all the information, photos of their storefront, photos of their product, all the things that you will optimize later on will contribute to them showing up on Google as part of the results. Okay, so have you heard of the term backlink? That's the one that I just mentioned, contributing article. Um, some bloggers get paid to create backlinks. It's the same, same concept as what I just mentioned. Uh, you're contributing an article, but it has a link back to your site. So backlink, link back, it's quite the same. No? Um, mentioning a certain keyword or a brand keyword, for example, sina. La Libertad, Lake, Anna. If they do a link back and then use that link to point back to their site, then the authority of this site will be passed on to the website. So it will show up because Google has uh, bots. You know what bots are? They use artificial intelligence. They use, they use machine learning to um, run an algorithm across all the pages in the internet. And there's a lot of it. You know? And the way for them to put a score or a grade on your uh, on your website is to make sure that it has authority. That is why we mentioned at least have 40 pages of content, requiring you only 20, to show you that or to show Google that your site actually has authority. And then later on, once you do link building, they call it link building. So hiring link builder. That's what you're going to do actually. You're going to put links on your articles, contribute it, or ask bloggers to write about you, ask for, do forum posting, um, post comments, post articles that have the link back to your site. 
So that's a uh, link building. So again, going back to business verification with Google, it is for you to have more visibility on search ranking, especially when you have a location. So take note of that and create that one for your MSMEs. So again, there's such thing as on-page SEO versus off-page SEO. Um, the, uh, the service that we offer is a TTM because I so a third team. Um, I try not to do on-page SEO. We only do off-page because um, our capacity is only for link building, guest blogging, submission to um, legit um, business directories, social media. So off-page SEO, anything that involves activities that are not on the site or activities that would drive awareness about that website, that's off-page SEO. When you say on-page SEO, it involves what you're going to be doing right now, which is green lighting the Yoast. That's on-page SEO because you're trying to create quality content. You're trying to optimize that content so that um, it will be considered as a green flag for Google to rank your site or to rank your content. So it involves content marketing. It involves keyword optimization, making sure your images have the right name, has the right alt tag, and of course that your, your website uh, loads fast because that's a... Uh, that's a factor for SEO. Now, how can you improve your site? So after creating your web pages, you've already created about 20 of them, it is time to improve each one of them. So think about, again, your buyer persona. Think about their pl the problem that they are, um, they are experiencing, their awareness uh, stage. Think about that and what solutions they are looking for. And then from there, you create content that convinces them why you are the right fit why you are the right solution, why you're the right uh, brand to work with. Now, how will your buyer persona search for you online? What keywords will they use? For example, your buyer persona is the traveler and then they're looking for van rentals. What are they going to type on Google? Van rentals kapatagan. Because they want it to be specific, right? So van rentals kapatagan. Now that you know that's a potential... Um, keyword or phrase that they will use then you start optimizing your content around that phrase so you create a page that says um, the best van rentals in Kapatagan diba? Nagmention siya sa keyword ni mo and then reasons why what's the name of your company reasons why this company offers the best van rental in Kapatagan oh, diba? so that is how they play around with content it's in the title and then they put the keywords, and then they put link backs. So all of these things, like we said, contributes to a higher uh, grade in SEO. And then how will your buyer search online to know more about your MSME, MSME or product or service? So now that they are aware, awareness, consideration, decision, because they use different keywords once they are in the, a different stage. So for example, uh, they, they're still in the awareness level, so they need, okay, van, rental, kapatagan. So now... They're looking at options. So they look for, they see a result and then they see the name of, what's the name of your your client? Like RJ Van Rental. So, ah, RJ Van Rental. Okay, let me search this. So they're going to search RJ Van Rental. So what do they see? Do they see the website? Do they see bad reviews about your client? Do they see good reviews? Do they see social media pages? All of these are like social proof. It's proof that they should be trusted because they have all these, um, all these content that says, yes, you should trust this company, okay? So now they're ready to decide, what would they type? Book, van, rental, Kapatagan. So once they see that keyword, book, a van, rental, book, a van, in Kapatagan, that's also one keyword that you have to optimize for because they're now ready to buy, right? So now you have to have a content on your site, a blog post, a page that is optimized for that keyword. Book, Van Rental, Kapatagan. So think about your products right now and then see what kind of keywords they're going to search depending on their stage, whether they're awareness, consideration, decision. And these are the type of content or blog posts that you will make on your website. Keyword research, this is running your own search queries and taking note of the suggestions. So for example, if I 
if I write travel, um, van rental kapatagan, will Google suggest other keywords? So you use a keyword search tool for that because it might be able to suggest some other keywords that have high density or like people are searching for it, you know. So once you see that people are actually searching for another keyword, then that's probably a keyword that you should also make content for. Making your listing search engine friendly. So make sure that each page, your product, your blog post has a readability of green, good or higher. And then again, we're always mentioning Yoast SEO. It has to be connected to the site. And both of them have to be green lighted. The ones that I've been showing you in the past demo and example. And then you can create subheadings to introduce each part or each section. So this is the Yoast SEO. Um, if you're not familiar, you can visit it. If you haven't installed it, install it, right? So all of the things here, it's just guided. It will make, um, it, what do you call that? The plugin will make it easy for you to optimize your content. So again, I've shown this to you. If you click edit, then you'll be able to see how optimized the title is, the description is, and then it will give you a score. So if this was properly optimized, then you would see this is green. All right, so suggestions, you're going to see this. Um, if you are wondering why it's still red, then take a look at their suggestions and follow. You can click this one and read what are the things you should edit, what are the things you should improve so that it will turn into green. I think May was able to experience yesterday that uh, passive voice in Hemingway. So that's an example. How are you going to make your uh, post more readable so you read the suggestions that they're giving you? Same with the SEO. What are your focus key phrase? There's such a thing as keyword stuffing, wherein you put so much keywords and it's overstuffing already. And that's a bad uh, practice. So overstuffing means, for example, I'm trying to rank for um, book van rental kapatagan. And then I put a lot of that phrase on the article. Mubura kaya kong article, perdagan kay book van rental, book van rental, balik. So that's keyword stuffing. Don't do that. It will only limit you to, I think, two uh, keywords on your description. Right, so making um, next is your focus keyword is your product name. Okay, your product, your product name that is your focus keyword. So that when people search for that certain product, they will be able to find it online. And then it must be restated on the first paragraph. And then later on, once you have your Yoast, we connect it to Google Search Console. And these are the things that you will set up right now after this demo. So Google Search Console. Google Analytics, Yoast, we're going to put this together. Uh, Google Search cons Console helps you manage the performance of your website, how it looks like on Google, what are the things you should do. So if there's a, such a thing as search engine optimization, this is uh, the way for you to know if you're actually ranking on Google itself because Google Search Console will show you um, the problems on your site. So it's going to show you the traffic. It's going to show you the top keywords that people use to go to your site. Um, the number of views, the impressions, the users, okay? So navigate through the search console and see what are the things you should be able to optimize for your site, okay? So review our lesson five. I mentioned this one last time. Remember this? So make sure that your listings are also search engine friendly. So you have to add the right number of keywords, the right description, the link box, the internal links for the green light to show up. And of course, you have your product features, your story. If you did not did not reach like 300 words and it still did not green light, then most probably there's something wrong with the writing or the readability. So take a look at the suggestions later on Yoast. So other SEO tools that you can use, you have similar web, right? So you can track competitors here. So if you know that someone else is selling kaong and you want to see what they're doing online, you can use similar web. It's like stalking your crush, you know? <laughs> so other SEO tools, you have this, right? So just go through this one because these are like suggested other tools. SEMrush, okay. But generally for this training, we're, we are going to use Google tools. Um, mainly, that's going to be Tapvik Enhanced Analytics. You're going to install that on WordPress. Um, you're going to install Yoast and then Google Analytics, and then you're going to optimize Google Search Console, right? 
So again, to track your site tra traffic, create an account on Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and then configure it. Put them together, you will, you're going to see the suggestions from there. So your source of traffic and revenue will be visible to you. From Google Analytics, you're going to see which site has been contributing um, the sales. So if you know that you're marketing on Facebook and then your sales come from Google, then it's a, it's a sign for you to probably do off-page SEO or do more article writing because your clients came from there. Or if you did an email blast and then you saw a purchase coming from that email newsletter that you created, then probably you need to do more email marketing. So Google Analytics will help track that for you, your source of traffic and revenue. Also from your website, which content is attracting more attention? So if you created articles like history or like workflow, but it's not attracting attention, maybe you should stop creating that and create more other content. And of course, you'll be aware of any errors from your site. So again, install Yoast and configure it at 20 pages. And then record your e-commerce analytics on Google Analytics and install Catvik. So that's it. Then um, let's get this together for our task number four. Actually, number five.